So, this is a Gothazar Harvester. He's a Bone Reaper, and up until a couple days ago, I didn't know he existed. Thanks to a friend gifting it to me, because I absolutely love this guy, but I've never looked at any of the Ossiarch Bone Reapers. They're just not something I think about. I'm not, I don't, I don't like them. But I do like these guys. Uh, this guy. It's a singular, it, one guy comes in this box. Um, he's big, he kinda silly, um, and he looks intimidating as all hell. Uh, which is gonna be perfect. Because I have a plan for this guy. Now, I'm not sure if you played a game called Spelunky, but if you spend too much time in a level, you get a big menacing ghost that chases after you until you finish the level. Now, I currently play uh, Blackstone Fortress with my friends, and I'm looking to make custom levels for it. And I think a Spelunky style ghost is gonna be perfect for some Blackstone shenanigans. The idea of something big and menacing slowly walking towards you before you can complete a goal, and maybe getting in the way of the exit, seems like a lot of fun that I don't think currently exists in regular Blackstone Fortress. Now, just to put a little bit of extra pressure on it, this is the last uh, big thing that I made. Now, I paint a lot of kind of like your basic rank and file guys. They're the ones that I kind of like to paint the most, um, which makes it super intimidating because I uh, even this guy looks small in comparison to this bone man and I've got to work out how to paint it. So here's my plan, I guess. So without further ado, welcome to my presentation on uh, bone man. Um, that's what he's going to be referred to from now on because I can barely remember anything. What I really wanted to do was kind of put everything down on the kind of paper. Uh, exactly what I want from this design, right? Uh, kind of like run you through what I want. Uh, um, this to look like, and then we can see uh, if it ends up looking like that. If it, if, if my idea is even a good idea, because um, at this point I I don't know yet. It isn't done. Um, so, my design philosophy is pretty simple, right? I want it to be cold, I want it to be dark, and I want it to be intimidating. This thing is going to be slowly creeping towards the board, uh, and progressively getting more and more terrifying as it gets closer. Um, because of this, this is exactly what I want. This is my colour theory. I want it to be cold and dark, preferably ghostly, uh, with a clear difference between the bones that he's collected and the bones that are part of him. Now, the main thing with kind of like Bone Reapers is that uh, they make their arm, um, they make themselves out of bones they collect. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a Bone Reaper man. Um, anyway, I came up with this. Ta da! This is my color theory. <laughs> now, this, as you can tell, um, starts with a uh, bone. Um, and then spooky bone, and then other bone, right? And then other stuff. Um, now this could be pieces of armor, just kind of grime in general. Um, the main thing is that I wanted these to be majority cold colors, right? Um, now it can be kind of hard to make cold bone kind of colors, uh, mostly because like browny and yellowy oranges um, don't typically uh, come into kind of like cold, cold kind of stuff. So this is what he looks like when he's fully made. Um, he looks pretty cool, um, absolutely covered in bones, um, as you might expect. Um, yeah, he's he's massive in comparison to the most things that I work on, um, and I've got to get him ready to primer so that we can actually start painting him. Now, I'm not really sure how I should uh, <laughs> go about this. I think the best way to do it is to just super glue him to two of these stabs that I have. Um, I, I, I can't 
glue him to the base because uh, it would be virtually impossible to paint all of him uh, given that he uses his tail for structural integrity as well as I want to do a good job with the base um, I can't really do that whilst he's on it because of how much of the base he, he takes up um, so I'm just gonna super glue him to these stabs um, now because the stabs are made of PLA they shouldn't super glue too well I should be able to pull it off uh, I've done it in the past, but I, I usually do it with uh, bases and not and not with the actual model. Um, and I think this is the only way that I'm going to be able to handle him. So, yes. And just as I was getting ready for primering, I heard a big bang and he fell on the floor. Um, <laughs> which means the, the stars probably weren't the best idea. Um, now the flag's been knocked off. Um, it's not a great kind of snap uh, it's kind of awkward it's a little bit like a uh, sideways uh, I don't think it's gonna glue that well so I'm just gonna put it to one side I think uh, the model doesn't necessarily need it I think it makes him look a little bit weird with it on and I think I prefer it without it so I'm just gonna move on now when it did fall on the floor as well uh, the bird at the very back uh, is a very fragile bird um, I'm just gonna cut that off and then I'm going to glue him to the front. Um, I feel like maybe there should have been more birds on this guy. If I had spare birds, I would add more birds. Um, I think it just it is fitting. Um, so the second bird, a lot more front and center, which should look a lot better. And I had totally forgotten until I came back to this that I cut off these two arms. Um, this is just because... There's enough arms, and he doesn't need any, um, need, he doesn't need penis arms. Um, <laughs> there's no other way about it, like, uh, they're, they're, they're just kind of stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. If, if they mean something important, I mean, one of them's holding, like, a weird thing. I don't know what it is. Um, I just, they, they weird me out, man. I just, yeah, yeah, no, weird. Now, one primer later, and he's looking incredibly cool. This is a grey primer with a ripe primer over the top, making him kind of look already quite ghostly, and is bringing out so many of the great details that are on this model. Now, we're going to start by using some speed paints. Uh, this should get me a really fast idea as to whether or not the colours I've chosen are good or not. We're going to be starting with the uh, ghostly skulls. Uh, this is mostly because I know what I'm doing. Um, should look good, probably. I hope. Now, when it comes to speed paints, I've got to make sure I don't get it everywhere. Uh, because I don't really want to do much patchwork, I've got to make sure that the bits that are blue are the only bits that are blue. Because uh, otherwise, I'll have to kind of remove it. Um, now... When you're dealing with very thin colours, uh, it, it can be an absolute pain if you uh, accidentally just like brush something with, especially like a blue. Everything else is supposed to look like yellow. Blue's gonna be a nightmare if I get it everywhere. So I got blue everywhere. Now, in my defence, it was virtually impossible. Uh, all of these ribs have uh, blue uh, down them, uh, and they shouldn't be blue on them. Uh, <laughs> Made an absolute pain. It's going to be even more of a pain when I have to paint all of these individual ribs. Part of me kind of wishes that uh, I could make them all blue, but you won't get kind of like the visual contrast. Uh, you kind of want the ribs to be made of something different so that they look more interesting when they have the glowy stuff behind them. Uh, yes. But that means I've got to make sure they look perfect now and they don't look perfect because uh, they got blue all over them covered in blue. So after being super happy with the blue, even if I had to repair a bunch of it, I had to move on to some of the bone colours, which I immediately realised um, probably isn't going to go well. Um, now looking through my choices of yellow speed paints, I don't really have an option for cold yellows. I don't have a cold yellow speed paint, which means I'm just going to go with a slightly yellowier pallid bone um, and this hopefully should look better now I'm gonna add a little bit of pink to this which should help counteract some of the 
or uh, some of the yellow make them a little bit more orange make it a little bit more cold hopefully probably won't um and i i didn't put really enough in to make anything happen anyway so anyway it looked wrong that's the main takeaway and so my uh, Swedish flag themed bone man is going really really well um this is exactly what I wanted yes bright uh, almost fluorescent yellow um it's at times like this I kind of regret like I, I, I should have just used pallid bone that might have been easier really wouldn't it um yeah <laughs> so the moment I realized that like I, I've applied this is like uh, how do I fix this um, and I've pretty much spent the next uh, couple of hours trying to work out how to fix it uh, I continue with the paint job uh, I, I, I kind of come to the conclusion that I think I need to do like a base layer of speed paints before I can fix any of it so yeah you so this is my Saturday morning cartoon style bone man. Um, there's only really one way of explaining it, and that is it. Um, now, this is all of the different colors that I've attached to it. And I, there, there are some I prefer than others. Um, but I'm going to fix this by making everything darker. Uh, I, I think one big coat of something dark brownie green probably um should make all of this look a lot more intimidating obviously I'm, I'm gonna skip all of the blue stuff leave them glowy and bright but everything else absolutely coat it in something i haven't decided on yet so here's my plan i'm gonna mix together some pallid bone and mummified grind my hopes in this is that uh, the mummified grime is a greeny brown kind of looking dirt, but it's going to be too strong to put over existing colours. Now, I've constantly underestimated how thin the pallid bone is, so I'm just going to use that as my speed paint medium. This should help mediate the colour of the mummified grime and make it look a lot more subtle than what it would be if I just put it straight on. This is it halfway through, and you can really start to see that uh, it looks a lot better. Now, it's kept all of the colors underneath, but kind of just dulled them down and made them look a little bit more grounded in reality. The final kind of end result I'm pretty happy with, but I'm gonna dry brush over. I've finally gotten a proper dry brush, so I'm super happy to try and use it on this as all of my other small improvised dry brushes probably won't be able to be used on something like this. It would just take way, way, way too long. Now, I'm still learning how to use these dry brushes properly. The giant heads mean that they can take up a lot of paint, and I've sometimes fallen into that pitfall. It's something I've got to learn more about, uh, so I'm excited to kind of keep working on my dry brushing skills. I'm just dry brushing with a titanium white. Now normally I would do some sort of tint, but I'm hoping to dry brush with white and then paint a tint over the top of it. Now I'm killing two birds with one stone. Not only am I painting it over with white, meaning that I only have to dry brush with one color, but I'll then tint the dry brush a different color later, uh, meaning that it looks different. It looks better, hopefully. Hopefully it looks better. And this is what I'm going to tint it with. I've got three different fluorescent paints, hopefully to bring back some of the vibrance that I've just lost by uh, coating it in mummified grime. We're going for a fluorescent yellow, a fluorescent red, and a fluorescent purple. This should give some variance between uh, the different kinds of bones, as well as the paint colour on the armour. Now, I'm going to not use the yellow in the end. I find it just... Uh, too garish and I couldn't get it to look any better but I'm still gonna use the the red on the redder bones and the purple on the purple armor I'm just gonna leave the dry brush white for the bones I feel like it's just best off um, and it still looks fine now that the bone man's like 
almost done, we're going to go back in time and start working on the base. Now, I want this to be almost like a beachy themed base, so what I've got here is some green stuff. I'm going to use this green stuff to make a bunch of rocks, stones and pebbles to go on the base to make it look a little bit more, kind of like a, a, a pebble beach. Now I'm going to try my best to shape these as I go. I'm using just a mixture of a scalpel and some sculpting tools to kind of press in some flat spaces. The main things with stones is that they have quite uh, hard and sharp edges, which I'm not going to be able to do whilst it's still in this kind of putty form. I'm going to have to wait for it to harden and then cut away some of the more rocky shapes from it. Now, because I want to think about how everything's placed, what I've done is I've put a little bit of thin green stuff on the base, and I've pushed him into it. This has left a footprint, which allows me to know exactly how this guy's going to be left on the base, I, even after I've fully painted it and kind of put the whole works onto it. I know exactly where this guy is going, which saves some confusion later on. And now it's time to bring out your favourite tub of peanut butter and smear it in between the rocks so that it starts to look a lot more like a base and less like a piece of plastic. Now two days later it's starting to look a lot better. Uh, all of the mud has kind of reduced in shape and size and it starts to look a lot better. And as well as I can now start shaping all of the stone. Now I'm just going to trim off most of the sides and make all of kind of like the little podgy kind of corners look a lot sharper. This just make it look a lot more like stone. Um, no, I can't lie, I, it was, um, there, there's a couple that were a little bit precarious. I was, I was worried about uh, just like slicing half of my thumb off most of the time whilst doing this. Um, but I didn't, I didn't hurt myself, which is uh, a bit of an achievement. We're gonna prime the rocks white and then paint it over with kind of like this dark grey and then I'm gonna dry brush over with kind of like a golden brown kind of bring out all of the edges. Now just by itself it looks quite good but it doesn't really match the theme so I've got this dark blue wash that I'm gonna use along with a little bit of speed paint medium and I'm just gonna paint it over the whole thing. This should make it look a lot darker and a lot colder, which is a lot more aligned with the model itself. This took a long time to dry, but now it's finally dry and I'm actually quite happy with the result. But I've got to make it look a little bit more detailed than it currently does. I'm going to do this by mixing some pigment powders together. This should make it look a lot more sandy and a lot more dry. The uh, blue wash that I have makes everything look quite shiny. It's quite a, yeah, it's quite a shiny paint for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, but this pigment is super matte. It should provide like a nice contrast between the shininess of the, the wet sand versus kind of like the dry sand. It should look nice. Now, whilst these are still drying, I'm going to kind of experiment and try something new. I've got that really shiny blue wash and uh, some gloss varnish. Now, I'm going to drop these into like set locations and kind of let these mix in with the pigment paint. Pigment paint's basically just water and powder, so this should create kind of like a rock pool effect. At least I'm hoping. This is the first time I've done it, so fingers crossed it looks all right. Now, it kind of leaked a little bit too much and mixed together with the water, creating very little kind of pigment, uh, only really around like the very edge of the base. Now, this could be down to uh, me doing it too early and not letting the pigment paint dry mu as much, as well as how much of the blue liquid that I put on. I still think it looks quite interesting though, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Despite probably doing with a couple of tweaks. This should do absolutely fine for this model, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, thanks to the foot imprints that I did right at the very start of making this base, I know exactly where this guy's going to go, and all I have to do is glue in those little foot imprints, and he's done. He's on the base, which, you know, makes things a lot easier. And that's this guy done, at least for now. I think maybe I w could come back and touch up some of the things. 
I really kind of like psych myself out on this one. I think uh, there's a couple of elements that maybe just were a little too intimidating for me to attempt. I really wanted this guy to look good because I want to use him. Um, and I don't want to kind of go too far and then uh, accidentally just like psych myself out and then it stays unfinished forever. But I'm super happy with how this looks. There are a couple things that I did off camera, like I made the birds into seagulls, I think that was kind of more fitting for kind of like this beachy kind of bone collector, as well as the little gold sigils on the side of his arms. And that's about it. This guy looks pretty cool, pretty intimidating. I, I really like how this is gone. Um, and yeah, I think I'm gonna have to do some, some bigger ones uh, in the future, because this was fun, but I don't really have the confidence to kind of go full on all out with these, mostly because of how much time it would take, uh, especially if it takes me three or four attempts to do any of kind of like the more complicated steps. Like I really wanted to do some glazing on this, but like glazing can take a while as it is. So on a huge model like this, it could take absolutely forever. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, uh, stick around. I'm still trying to work out exactly what this channel is and uh, it's gonna keep evolving and changing as I get better or worse at making things. So please stick around, peace.